Konnichiwa everyone, it's Dan from Jadan.co.uk and today's video is what it's really like to work in an Eikaiwa. Oh. <laughs> Cheers for finding my video! Here on Jadan I'm going to bring you interesting, fun and authentic videos straight from Japan twice a week. So if you're new here, do me a favour and hit that subscribe button. But today's video is all about what it's actually like to work in an Eikaiwa. For those of you that don't know, an Eikaiwa is a conversational school in Japan. It's not like high school. I don't go to school, there's not school kids, there's no uniform, stuff like that. It's basically like private tuition. And it basically is targeted at different groups. Right from kids as young as three, to like old people that do it as a hobby at like 90 years old. And everything in between, so we've got kids, school students, we've got like adults, we've got business, we've got exam prep, we've got man to man, we've got everything. So people are like going on their travels, they want to learn a bit of English, they come to an Eikaiwa, which is kind of cool. And the focus in an Eikaiwa is not so much teaching English as it is teaching communication. Like how to use English practically is more the focus than let's learn a load of new grammar terms today. So it's a bit different to what you might expect working in a school, but it's got its own charm too. So you might be asking yourself like, why a Kaiwa? What is it? Like, why do people bother with this? So for people like me, us Gaijins, it's cool because like, it's a good way to get to Japan. A lot of these companies will fly you over to Japan, they'll give you the visa to get you through the door, which is cool. Teaching qualifications are not particularly required. You'll often need a degree for the visa side of things, but you don't need to be an actual teacher. As long as you can speak English, you're probably good to go. And the work is relatively easy. It's not like mind-bogglingly difficult. So yeah, those things make it good for foreigners. In terms of like Nihonjin for the Japanese people, it's good for them because they can fit it around their busy life schedules. And they can also, like any age can do this, so you don't have to be in school to study. And in Japan these days there's many reasons to use English. Lots of people, especially with the Olympics coming up, want to learn English. So for them it's a convenient way to interact with foreigners and learn English directly from somebody who speaks it as their native language. It's kind of cool. A little bit of background about my situation. So currently I work for one of the big chain Eikaiwas in Japan. So there's maybe four or five great big companies and they've got branches all over shop and basically they're good for getting your foot in the door. So they help me get to Japan so I work for these guys. Um, currently I'm in Hyogo so I work between Kobe and Himeji and I currently work at three different schools. I work five days a week so I currently work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. And in the week it's 1.20 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And on the weekend, it's 10 a.m. to 6, 10 p.m. And that consists of eight or nine lessons, depending on the day's schedule. And I usually get a lunch break in between. And the monthly pay is about 250,000 yen a month, which is livable, like it's pretty cool. So yeah, that's my current situation in terms of how my job looks from the outside. Right, so daily life is like this, working in an Eikaiwa. I rock up to work about 20 minutes before my shift's due to start. And you know, I put my tie on, my little name badge, and change my shoes, and all this stuff. And then I start doing me like my bookkeeping for the day, where basically I check my messages, I have a look at my schedule for the day, and I just do a bit of general upkeep. So then, after I've done this, I'll plan my first lesson at day. I have to look at the students' uh, students like records and see which lessons they've done, which lessons they haven't done in the textbook. Uh, if there's any special requirements, who else is in the class, do I know them, are they new? Like I have to look at all this stuff. And then I choose my lesson, I have a quick skim through if I've not done the lesson before to see what the language is, make sure there's no words that are going to trip me up because you will inevitably get tripped up not knowing an English word. Some people are like, Sensei, what's this word? I'm like, I don't know, it sounds like a tree or something. Turns out outcrops are not trees, they're like massive rocks in Australia, but I didn't know that at the time, did I? can't win them all. Anyway, I look through the book, make sure I know what's going on, and then I'll go out into the lobby and greet students as they rock up, like, yo, wagwan, how's it going? All that kind of stuff. And then actually go in, teach a lesson, it's 40 minutes, and we go through a lesson, which I'll talk about in a minute, and then I finish my lesson, I come out, I've got 10 minutes before my next lesson, and in that 10 minutes, I basically 
update the students' records and give them like a score on like how they did in different sections. You know, like vocab, ac uh, accuracy, fluency, listening, and all this stuff. Give them a score, and that goes on their system they can see at home. And then I plan my next lesson, and I kind of rinse and repeat this schedule. Like plan a lesson, teach a lesson, do the feedback, repeat, repeat, repeat. And I do that about eight or nine times a day. Somewhere in there I've got lunch, so I go outside and get some lunch. But generally, yeah, that's what happens in daily life in Eikaiwa. In terms of actually teaching a lesson, it depends on a few things like what course they're actually doing and like what level they are. But generally speaking, I'm going to be using a textbook for a group lesson and they're the most common, like adult groups are the most common. So I use a textbook that's used by the company they provided and I choose a lesson, there's like 50 lessons per book and there's four seasons, so there's four books a year. And I choose the lesson and we're going to lesson. The first five minutes are kind of like a warm up, be like, yo, what did you do last week? Oh, that sounds sick, Ray, right, cool. What do you do? Oh yeah, cool, you went shopping, nice one. And you do a bit of warm up, just like friendly conversation. And then you actually get into teaching. So each lesson for my school has got two pages. And the first bit is kind of like an explanation of what we're going to study today. Often in Japanese, for the lower levels, it tells them how we're going to say this in their own language so they've got some idea of what's going on. Then there's a context with like a picture so we can guess what the context is and a little like sample conversation to give them an idea of how it works in the real world. Then we move on to like vocabulary and like sentences. So it gives them a couple of like language patterns to use. So a couple of patterns. And then we sort of drill that for a bit, so we'll just practice saying the vocabulary, practice saying the sentences, and I basically spoon feed them the sentences at this point. Then we move on to like a listening exercise where they have to listen and fill something out, just to get used to listening practice. And then the second page is often like a practice section, which is basically, yeah, it's basically, it depends on the lesson but it's kind of all the bits that you need to build the sentence, but not together. So they kind of have to put all the pieces together to make the sentence. And it's usually a very simple A and B kind of conversation. But then you get to the production section when you've got very little to go on. Be like, okay, this is the idea. Go, speak, have a conversation about it using the language you've just learned. And then at the end, we've got five minutes for feedback or questions, if they've got any questions. And then I'm like, yo, sit there, I'm off and I go and do my bookkeeping. So yeah, kids is a little different. You do a lot more games and singing and dancing. Be like, yay, I'm right Genki today. And you're not, cause you just got up like three hours ago and you can't be bothered. But they don't know that. And yeah, it's kind of cool. Other things that you can end up doing while you're working. Sometimes you have free lessons and in them free lessons you often do school upkeep. So you'll be doing things like cleaning tables or you know, stamping stuff that they send out to customers or sometimes uh, you'll be on this like outside the school handing out promotional material like in summer they do like fans and in winter like tissues with adverts on them and you give them out to people on street. Not all schools do this, my school does it sometimes so it depends. But yeah you can end up doing stuff like that. Other things involve kids events or like adult events. So my company used to do like wine day for adults where people come and have a glass of wine and just talk. Uh, we also do things like kids Halloween parties and Christmas parties and stuff like this. So yeah, like special events. And the other thing you'll do is you'll do demo lessons for students that are thinking about signing up. They come in for like a demo lesson. You do a bit of a demo lesson. One of the Japanese staff rocks up and does a sales pitch and you try and get somebody to sign up. So that's kind of cool. In terms of the actual school, um, depends on which school it is, but usually there's a Japanese member of staff that actually deals with the day-to-day -day running of the school, like greeting customers and payments and selling courses and that kind of stuff. So you really don't do too much of the sales kind of stuff, you're just there to teach. Often you'll have a little staff room with your computer where you sit and do your bookkeeping, um, your store room where all your books and stuff are, and then one, two or three classrooms depending on how big your school is. So yeah, that's essentially a Kaiwa life. To sum everything up, let's do a little bit of like pros and cons and see what's going on. In terms of the pros, we've got like, the job itself is kind of interesting. You meet a lot of people, uh, you get a lot of interaction with people that come to your school. That's kind of cool. Um, it's not that difficult. If you can read and you can speak English to a native level, it's not that taxing. It's not like you've got to think about stuff all day. And to be honest, the money's decent. 
and it's really good for getting you through the door. They're all pretty good pros. In terms of cons, like it can be a bit repetitive. Like the student comes and they do one lesson a week and that's cool for them. But for three months you've got the same 50 lessons and you're just like teaching the same lessons over and over and over and over again. And it gets a bit repetitive. Um, the way that the working schedule works, we work evenings and weekends because that's when people don't work. So having a social life can be a bit tough. Uh, especially if like me, my days off on Monday and Friday, people generally aren't doing stuff on Monday and Friday. So it's kind of hard to have that social life. So you either don't have a social life or you get used to being very tired because you stayed out last night. What can you do? Sometimes you can end up traveling quite a bit between different schools. Like it's only one school a day, but I work in three different schools right now, three different schools. And I've worked in various other schools and you have to travel around a fair bit. I mean, the company does pay for the travel, but it's still time out of your day when you're traveling to work. And with it being such a big company, this is not just a dig at my company, this is a dig at all companies. You end up being a number on the bottom line, like what you actually want doesn't matter all that much. You're there to do a job, you're there to fill a position. And if, at the end of the day, if you don't want to do it, there's somebody else back home that will come and do it. So in that way, you can feel a bit disposable from the higher ups. But in your actual school, like with the students and the staff members, you end up building a rapport and you feel like a little community. So that's cool, but then you've got no guarantee that you're gonna be there long term. Like you can just get moved from one school to another and it's very hard to kind of keep up with that rapport. So yeah, pros and cons about working in Aikaiwas. Overall, as a final note, it's not too bad if you are thinking about coming to Japan. It's a decent way in. It's not a dream job but it is what it is. So if you come here with a pretty open mind, it's going to be great. But if you come here with an idea like, I want to do this, this and this, probably not going to be for you. And today's question of the day is, have you worked in an Aikaiwa? What were your experiences if you did? And if you are thinking of coming to Japan, what do you think about Aikaiwas? Let me know in the comments below. I love to hear from you guys and I'll do my best to reply to as many as I can going forward. But that's it for today's video. I super appreciate you sticking about to watch it. If you haven't already, do me a favor and hit this subscribe button. But I gotta go. So as always, until next time, Jamata!